Good evening. I hope you guys are doing well. We are going to finally do the FET Build an Atom Lab walkthrough. Sorry that it took so long to get this video going. Um, if you are in Canvas, go to the Assignments tab and you will see the FET Build an Atom Lab. Click on that. Um, this link takes you to this simulation. <laughs> If you, you go on down and you click on the sheet to open up the lab. Pretty much what you're going to do when you're in here, this gives you a good idea of what is going on inside of an atom. For instance, you have a proton. As you notice here, and this is the big thing you guys need to look at. Remember, protons have a plus one charge. So, for instance, you see it says a plus charge there because I put a proton in, and it's hydrogen. If I add another proton, it now has a plus two charge, but it also changed the element. So, anytime you add or take away a proton, it changes the element. So, in other words, you notice right now it's hydrogen. I add one, it becomes helium. So, if you look at the periodic table, we did have hydrogen when I had one. Then we added two, we jumped to helium. So, for instance, if I add one more proton, it'll go to lithium. Okay. So, with um, what we learn as far as basics, for every proton, there is usually, not always, but usually one neutron. Now, remember that neutrons have no charge. No charge. They don't add anything. They don't take anything away. They do add to the mass of the atom, but as far as charge goes, they don't add anything. They don't take anything away. Uh, so neutrons are completely neutral. Right, now, electrons are different. Now, remember, every proton has a plus one charge. For instance, if I take all these protons out, you see there's no charge there. There's nothing. There's just three neutrons. But if we add three protons in, again, we have a plus three charge. Remember, when an atom has a charge, it is called an ion. Okay, it can be a negative charge or a positive charge. It's still called an ion. Now, remember, atoms want to be stable. They don't want to be plus. They don't want to be minus. They want to have zero charge, be neutral. So which particle do we need to add to this atom in order to bring this plus three charge down to zero? Well, it's electrons. We add one, two. Now watch this section right here. Add three. Now it's neutral. We have three pluses. We have three minuses. If you add three and subtract, if you have a positive three and a negative three and you put them together, you end up with zero. So we now have a completely stable lithium atom with three protons, three neutrons, and three electrons. Okay, and... Sorry, I need to hit this reset button here. When you are looking at the SPET lab, uh, you're supposed to rewrite this goal in here. Um, and you can do that if you want to, but that's not something I'm remembering to do. So it asks you to build a couple of different atoms. Um, we just did, so... We'll put a hydrogen in there. Remember, the basis that you always want is you always want one proton, one neutron, one electron. One, one, and one. So one proton, one neutron, one electron. That means that if we add one more proton, now that we have two protons, what do we need to add to make everything completely equal across the board? Well, we need to add two, we need to add one more neutron to make it two total, and one more electron. To make it two total. So now that we have two protons, we are on helium. Okay. And it's neutral because we have the same amount of protons and the same amount of electrons. So two pluses and two minuses put together become zero charge. Okay, let's set. Let's move on. So we made hydrogen. We made helium, we made lith lithium. And we're going to get down here. Um, 
once you become more familiar with the periodic table and the elements, you won't, uh, this won't seem as confusing, but it will at first if you're new to it. And that's not a big deal because you are certainly capable of learning it. Um, with carbon, if you find it on the periodic table, carbon sits right here. So when you are looking at this element, let's look at it over here, you see two numbers over here. We're going to ignore these numbers right here. Um, but this number six right here, that is the atomic number. The atomic number. Remember, the atomic number is the amount of protons that you have in there. So if I take six protons and I throw them in there, look, it is now carbon. However, what do I have? Remember, I need the same number across the board. I need six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons. Right now, I have six pluses. I'm going to throw these neutrons in there for balance in my nucleus. You can see how many I have there. But it is still positive six. So what do I need to put in there to make this zero? If I have six pluses here. What do I need to put over here in order to make it a zero charge? I need six electrons. All right, uh, I like the orbits better. Okay. So now we have a completely stable neutral carbon atom. So if you go back and you look at the assignment, it says how many protons do you have? Well, we had six. How many neutrons do you have? We have six. We're going to put six in here. We're going to put six in here. Now your mass number, which is right here on the periodic table. It says 12. So what is your mass number? What do you see on here that adds up to 12? Well, you see the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So the number of protons plus the number of neutrons gives you your mass number, which is 12. Okay. Now remember, we want the same number across the board. We want six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons. So if we have six protons, six neutrons, how many electrons do we need? Remember, same number across the board. We want six, right? Okay. So that we've already filled in that one. Now let's go find nitrogen. Let's reset. And nitrogen is right here next to carbon. Nitrogen is just one proton, one element above carbon. So we're going to go one, two, three, and again, notice every time I add a proton, it changes the element. If I take one away, it changes the element. If I add one, it changes the element. Protons, the atomic number on the periodic table, that is your number of protons. That tells you what element it is. Okay, so let's see, six, I added seven. I have seven protons. I have a nitrogen atom but with the protons, I need the neutrons as well. I need usually the same amount of neutrons. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Now remember, for every proton, I have a plus one charge. I just added seven protons, and each one of them is worth plus one. So what is my total charge on this ion, on this nitrogen ion? Remember, any atom that has a positive or negative charge is an ion. Okay, the charge is plus seven. So what do I need to add in order to, what do I need to put into the atom? If I have plus seven here, what do I need to put in in order to bring that charge down to zero to make it equilibrium? I need to add seven electrons. Okay, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, now we have a completely neutral nitrogen atom. Seven protons, seven neutrons, seven electrons. Okay, so let's go fill out our chart. Seven protons, seven neutrons, seven electrons. 
Now remember, our mass number is what? Here it's 14. So what numbers do you see here that add up to 14? Well, it's actually the protons and the neutrons. You could, you could say it's that way, but the mass number is always the protons plus the neutrons. So that's 14. That's why it goes in this order. <clears throat> Last one we're going to do is oxygen. We're just moving right up the periodic table. We are just going to add one more proton, because remember we have seven protons right now. Well, we're going to add one more. Hey, look, it's oxygen now. One thing to note right here is that it has a net charge of plus one. Okay. Why does it have a net charge of plus one? Well, because we took one of these protons that's worth plus one and threw it in there. It changed the element, but it also gave a positive one charge. So since it's plus one, what do we need to put in here to bring it back down to zero, to a net charge? Need to put one electron in there. Now one thing that you'll notice if you go up here is we have seven protons and seven electrons but we only have let's see one two three four five six seven neutrons and I think I made a mistake there in my numbers I did my mistake it is eight protons and eight electrons but we also want eight neutrons all right so one thing that we need to do also, and I'll show this to you here in a second, let's fill this in first. So how many protons did we have? Eight. How many neutrons did we have? Eight. Your mass number is protons plus neutrons. Eight, eight is 16. And by the way, um, if you're ever playing blackjack, good rule of thumb is always split aces and eights and pretty much against anything except when the dealer has a face card on. But that's a whole other story. Okay, so if we had eight protons, we had eight pluses, how many minuses do we need to bring that charge back down to zero? Well, we have eight pluses here. Remember, neutrons have no charge, so we need eight negatives, eight electrons, in order to bring it back down to zero. Okay, so that is how you do that part. So it says, looking at the table, you just completed what patterns do you notice? Well, I would say same number of protons, neutrons, and electrons are present in every atom. Now that's usually the case. We'll get into some different scenarios later. But for what you learn in geoscience, that's enough. What else do we notice? Well... Mass number is the sum of the protons plus the neutrons. All right, because remember, protons plus neutrons is mass number. What is the last thing we noticed? Well, if you want your atom to have a net charge of zero, for instance, say I take a proton out, well, now it has a negative one charge. It changed the element because I took a proton out. It took it from oxygen to nitrogen, but it also now has a negative one charge. So because it has one more negative electron, it has eight, let's see, four. It has eight negatives and only seven positives. That's why we're one in the whole negative one charge. So I can either take an electron away and make it neutral, or I can add a proton, but that changes the element, and that also gives us a neutral atom. And by neutral, I mean it has no charge. So if it is going to be equal in charge for a net zero charge, you need the same number of protons and electrons. Now, one thing to note is that anytime you are given an element and it has a plus or a minus charge, you do not want to change the protons. Because if you change the protons, you change the elements. You can add and take away as many electrons as you want. For instance, you see I kept it at oxygen, but I added two negatives. So I'm now a negative two charge because I added two electrons. 
I can also take electrons away, which means that there's more protons than electrons, and I end up with a positive charge, because now I have eight positives and only six negatives. So that gives me a plus two charge. Okay, so that's another thing to keep in mind. So we just completed that part. Which part of the atom changes the element? Well, what do you add or subtract from here to change the element? The protons. Take a proton away, it changes the element. If you add it in, it changes the element. So that is protons. Remember, protons are represented by the atomic number. So the atomic number, that's this number in the top left, is the number of protons. For instance, potassium here has 19 protons. Anything that has 19 protons, regardless of electrons or neutrons, it's potassium. Um, if it has 38 protons, it's strontium. It doesn't matter how many pro or how many neutrons or electrons it has, it's strontium if it has 38 protons. So let's go back over here. How is the mass number calculated? Well, remember, your protons plus your neutrons, that is your mass number. So one proton plus one neutron on hydrogen gives you a mass number of two. Hydrogen's a little weird. I know that's strange because it says one right there on the mass number. So let me, there's various reasons for that. We're not going to get into that right now. But um, what I am going to show you guys right now, let's do helium. Okay, because I want you to understand that. So we'll add two protons, two neutrons. You see there's four in there. And the atomic, or the mass number is four. So the protons plus the neutrons is the mass number. All right, so let's see. How many protons would magnesium have? Well, let's go over here and find it. It is right here. It has an atomic number of 12, so it has 12 protons. How many electrons would a neutral magnesium have? Well, I don't have enough protons sitting in this basket to put 12 in there. However, it doesn't matter because we can represent the same thing. So I have a plus one charge here. Let's just clear it out. Sorry, I should have just did that. Okay, so let's put one, one, and one. So we have a neutral hydrogen atom. It says, how many electrons would it need to be neutral? Well, magnesium, you know, if it has 12 protons, 12 pluses, how many minuses does it need? How many electrons does it need in order to be neutral? Well, it would need 12. Okay. Now we're going to get down into this part, and this is where it can get a little bit confusing um, if you're not used to all of this. So on here... Oh, let's pick, actually we'll pick beryllium. Actually, no, let's go with lithium. Why? Because it's a song by Nirvana. Um, so we are going to put three. Actually, you know what? I should just go with the element on there, um, which is, oh, it's hydrogen. Okay. Hydrogen's a little too easy because it's one, one, and one. But if you notice, this periodic symbol um, is set up a little bit different than one on this table, okay? Here you have the atomic number up here, you have the mass number down here, right? And I guess that is actually the charge on it, but actually, no, my mistake, it's not the charge. It has no charge because it's sitting at zero right now on ours, but you see that here it's hydrogen and here it's also hydrogen. Here it's beryllium, here it's also beryllium. 
So this one right here, you know hydrogen has an atomic number of one. So that is going to be the atomic number right there in the bottom left. Now this next number that you'll notice up here, it says five. This one says three. So you have to, then you look at these two numbers, you see they are both negative one. Well, your mass number cannot be a negative number because remember it's the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. If there's no protons there, it's not an element, right? So in order to have a positive or negative number, um, specifically a negative number or something that is noted with a charge, it has to be the electrons, okay? So since this is the atomic number, this five is going to be the mass number. It says it has a mass number of five. Now remember, we can't add more protons because if we add more protons, we change the element and we know it's hydrogen, right? So what can we add in there to make that mass number five, but not change the element? Okay. Remember the mass number is the protons plus the neutrons. So now we have four neutrons and one proton, which is a total of five, okay? So four protons plus, or I'm sorry, four neutrons plus one proton is five. Now it has a negative one charge. So one thing you'll notice here is that we, it is neutral right now because it has one proton and one electron. The neutrons don't have a charge. To make it negative, what do you need to put in there? Because right now it's at zero. So you can add one of these two. This one is, remember, protons are plus one, electrons are negative one. So what can you add to give this a negative charge? We need to add one electron, right? Because now, as you can see, it is a negative one charge. Because it was at zero, remember, you can only add or subtract electrons to change the charge. Because if you change the protons, you change the element. So what do we know here? We know we got one proton, number of neutrons. Remember, this number is made up of this number plus the number of protons. So we know we have four neutrons, excuse me, one proton, that's where you get your five, number of electrons, we have two because the charge is negative one, all right? So we have two electrons. Now we're gonna go to this one. Well, we already know the number of protons because it tells us right there in the atomic number. Now, we know the mass number is up here and that's the protons plus the neutrons, right? So this number plus this number is gonna equal three. Well, what number do we need to put in here to make these add up to three? Two. Now last thing, we know that we have a negative one charge here. So this is basically kind of the same, almost the exact same thing. But remember, on this one, we have one proton, two neutrons, but we want it to have a negative one charge. Well, we already have that set up. It's two electrons. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. Okay. Now we're going to move to beryllium. So as, when you're looking at this, you'll notice that beryllium has four, has an atomic number of four. Now I'm, for time's sake, I'm just going to make it four protons to make it beryllium. Now remember, I need the same number of neutrons as protons. That is usually the case. This one I think is going to be a little bit different. Now I'm positive too. Right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and make it stable, and then we'll work backwards. So this is a completely neutral beryllium atom. It has four protons, four neutrons, and four electrons. There's no charge because we have the same number of protons and electrons. And it's balanced um, in the nucleus because we have the same number of protons and neutrons. Remember, the electrons don't really have any mass to them. They have little to no mass. Okay, so we know the atomic number is the number of protons, so we can put four in there. Now remember this number, the mass number, is the protons plus the neutrons. So we need this number plus this number to equal eight. So what number can we add to four to get eight? That's four, okay? 
Now the part that can be a little bit confusing. We need to get a positive 2 charge on this atom. We need a positive 2 charge. We can only add electrons or take away electrons. We cannot add or take away protons because that changes the element. So if we want this to say plus 2, do we add electrons or do we take them away? You actually take away electrons and you end up with a positive 2 charge because you have two more protons than you do electrons. So that is a positive 2 charge. Right? So we ended up with two electrons on there. Now we're going to move to the last one. So this one, same element, so we know it's going to be 4. Same mass number, so that's going to be the same 4. Because if we got 4, 8, 4, 8. Now this one just has a plus 3 charge. So what do we need to add or take away in order to make it a plus 3? We can either add electrons or we can take them away. We're going to take one away. That gives us a plus 3 charge right here. Okay, so we ended up with one electron there. Okay, so looking at the table, what did you notice? Well, we noticed that it was not the typical representation that we usually get on, say, this type of periodic table, but um, I would say something like, you, okay, where did that go? It went down there, okay, or subtract electrons, it changes the charge, okay, that's something to put in there. Um, so according to the table you completed, how do you find the atomic number? Well, the atomic number is just the number of protons, right? So for instance, let's pick another one. Let's pick iron. Well, the atomic number is the number of protons. It has 26 protons. So let's see. How did you find the atomic number? Well, how did I find it? I looked, I found hydrogen, and I looked on the periodic table. And I saw hydrogen's atomic number is 1, so I knew this was the atomic number. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, hopefully I'm communicating that clearly. So the atomic number is the number of protons. All right, how do you create a positive or negative charge? Remember, what did we add or take away from here to change this net charge? Which one of the three subatomic particles? Add or subtract electrons. Okay, how do you create a negative charge? Well, remember, you can only add or take away electrons. So think of your electrons as like the people in your life with a very negative vibe, the people that go to meetings and just complain all the time. If you add, keep adding more and more negative people in meetings that complain all the time, you end up with a very negative vibe. Hopefully that little analogy makes sense. That's why you need more protons in your life, not more electrons. Okay, let's see. Add more electrons. <clears throat> Remember, you don't want to change the number of protons because you change the element. According to the table you completed, what does the top left number represent? Well, I know that's the mass number because the mass number isn't going to have a charge on it. So I knew this one. I knew beryllium's atomic number is 4. And I knew this was the mass number because the mass number is not going to have a charge. So let's see here. Number of protons and neutrons does and is not notated in the charge. So one thing I would say about that is if you look at this chart, this is a positive eight, but this is also a positive three, but this is notated with a plus sign in front of it to um, let you know that it has a charge. And for instance, and then this one up here, this is a positive three and this is a negative one. 
but um, these are on the right. You see they all are notated with a chart with a plus or a minus. So that's how you know that is the chart on it. Okay. Um, we did not do this part. I think fill in the blank next to the element because you guys were having a hard time typing in there. So I said, don't worry about it. What does it mean if the charge is zero? Well, remember if the charge is zero, that just means what? It has the same number of what? Okay. Right now we have a plus one charge. What do we need to put in here? Which one of the three to make this a neutral atom? Well, we need electron. So if it has a charge of zero or neutral, it has the same number of protons and electrons. All right, and I think that is it for this FET lab, Adam. If you guys need to use this periodic table. I think I just Googled periodic table and it is the first one that comes up periodic table, P table. Um, a pretty, pretty good little periodic table reference. All right, so that is all I have for you guys. If you have any questions, please let me know. Hopefully that, um, I know I went kind of, hopefully I went kind of slow there and explained things a little bit better. But if you have any questions, just send me a message in the Canvas inbox or email, preferably Canvas inbox, and I will do my best to answer those for you. All right, thank you. Have a good day.